to kind of think that how it, which technology suits it best um, as per the current architecture of the, uh, of the application. Uh, as we talk of design, uh, again coming back to the data, the source of knowledge and the probable approach is uh, probably the thing that you need to think. Uh, uh, this, this diagram really shows us um, that what kind of data we have and what are the different approaches we can generally take. So if we have context, so context, uh, we haven't talked about context in uh, the whole session yet, but I can um, talk briefly on context. Context, there are context aware recommended systems also, yeah. which, which take care of the context also. Context means, um, let us say, I want to go for a movie with my friends or with my family or with my girlfriend. So here, the context is different. So again, another, another example, um, summer, I want to go um, for vacations in summer or in winter. So we have a context of a season here. So um, on the basis of context of seasons, we can say that, okay, your suggestion or recommendation will change on the basis of context. So, so context can be available as your one of the input. Opinions can be behavior and demographics. So if we have these inputs, then definitely we can go for a collaborative um, type of recommend, uh, recommendation system. If we have opinion behaviors, demographics and item features then we can go for content based and if we have demographic requirements item features domain knowledge and contextual knowledge then we, we will go for the knowledge based here what is we are when we are going for the knowledge based we are missing the behaviors and opinion if we do have then we, we can create a knowledge based hybrid system that can be collaborative also okay So um, as you can see that um, this um, Facebook and the Twitter, the recommendation that we generally get is, is collaborative because we have the context of opinions and behaviors and demographics from these social inputs, social uh, knowledge resources. And content, we saw the examples for content based as we saw a lot of examples from IMDB or the music sources. And the knowledge base, I gave you one example. Uh, the I want full was one of the uh, knowledge based example uh, the one that we are creating for our client is also a knowledge based uh, which is because constraint based is a knowledge based uh, type of recommended system uh, once we uh, talk, think of designing our uh, once we say that we have to implement or we implemented a system it also needs evaluation that uh, how our system is doing so there are different types of evaluation that generally a person can um, or a team can do is offline evaluation where we try to simulate the user behavior on the pre-collected uh, data set and then we analyze the recommendations. And this is a, one of the easiest way to do um, evaluation because you don't have to interact with the users. Uh, you have all the results with you. You can tweak the system as and when you want. You can change the algorithms and all. But the biggest uh, challenge here is for this type of evaluation you don't have um, you cannot create exact user behavior through um, online simula offline simulation or uh, automated simulation so for that we have to go to the users for studying them and conducting the um, user studies so when we do the user studies um, we uh, request a set of uh, users and ask them to perform several um, tasks um, and they can interact with the recommender system and then uh, they can tell us uh, or we can observe or record their behavior um, and collect any number of quantitative measures um, and we can also see that what kind of tasks they have completed, what is the accuracy of the task, um, and how, how we are doing on recommendations, how, how recommendations are impacting user behavior. We can observe all those things. And we can also present questionnaires. Uh, the other one is evalu uh, online evaluation when we really try to compare multiple algorithms real time. Uh, what we can do is we can implement multiple algorithms, algorithms and we can route some of the traffic uh, on one of the server and then rest of the traffic to a different recommendation engine. And we can see that how user behavior is, how um, recommendations are coming up, whether the users are using the recommendations or not, even noticing it. And 
how different, then we can compare the two uh, algorithms. And this has happened a lot of times. And, and then people choose uh, the one that is performing the best. The next one is uh, evaluation. Um, in evaluation, that what kind of possible recommendation you can have? Let's take a look at this small table, but it's a very interesting table. Um, here we have, um, on uh, x-axis, we have recommendations, uh, recommended or not recommended. Let's say an, an item can be recommended or not recommended. Once it is recommended, it can be liked by a user or not liked by a user. Okay, so any item. So here we will try to calculate the precision from this table. If a, in an, an item which is recommended by the system and also liked by the user, we can call it as it, it was a true candidate for the recommendation. We call it a true positive. And if there is an a, there is a item that is not recommended by the system, but user wanted to see it, it was an item that user really needed, then we will call it a false negative item. Um, recommendation because we wanted it but we didn't show it. Our system did not show it. And the next one is when we recommended it but user did not like it, he did not want it and then this is false positive. We are showing it but it's false. And the last is the true negative. We don't want it, we did not show it. So uh, there are three major factors by which we can uh, evaluate the possible recommendations. Uh, precision. So it is a ratio of true positive over the total um, recommendations that were made by the system. And the true positive rate is a, a ratio of true positive over the items that user wanted. So we should uh, try to keep precision and true positive rate as high as possible. So if it is a, we are getting by some system, we are getting it's the highest, then that system is the best. And the false positive, uh, false positive rate is the exact opposite of true positive we are trying to see how many recommendations we made incorrectly out of the total recommendations uh, that user did not want it. There's another um, metrics that we can use uh, to find the absolute error. This is the mean absolute error where we will try to um, predict the ratings by the system and the ratings given by the user. And then we will try to find the error. We generally try to keep this error as minimum as possible but that generally, generally doesn't happen. So um, the highest error, uh, mean uh, absolute error, the, we are going away from our goal. The last part in evaluation is uh, success of a recommender system. These are the major factors that generally uh, play a role uh, for success of a recommender system, which is prediction accuracy, how accurately we are predicting um, the data. Uh, or the recommendations to the user. Coverage. Coverage is one of the very uh, important factor where we say what is our item space coverage? Means out of the, let's say our system has 100 products. Are we capable of suggesting all the 100 products under different conditions? If not, then uh, what is the reason? And if it is legitimate or is intentional, then it's fine. If it's not, then we need to tweak our algorithms. Then user space coverage because there can be different types of users on our site. It can be a person who has very unique taste or very um, common type of user. So can we recommend at least something to a unique user? So that is our um, user space coverage. So sometimes um, system might not recommend anything to our unique user due to the low confidence in the recommendations because there are uh, in most of the recommendation system, we also define confidence of the system. Okay, if the confidence is X, then only show this. So if we are not able to recommend anything to a user, what is the accuracy, confidence, and the user space trade-off that we need to decide? That, okay, if the user is unique, let's show him something which is let at least this much precise. So we can create um, kind of a plus-minus threshold um, on our uh, I would say um, general confidence rate. Um, the confidence, again, as I talked, confidence is a confidence is a trust of the system in recommending something. So how how um, how well the system is uh, is comfortable or believe that this is a correct recommendation and user will choose it. 
and the next one is trust. As we talked confidence, confidence was a system's trust. Now trust is a user's trust in the recommendations. Do I like my do I like the recommendations that are made to me? If that is not happening, then user might not come back to our site. So, so sometimes what we do, what systems generally do, they really recommend something that is already liked by user or known to the user or matches with the user preferences. Even though that is a repetitive recommendation, but it increases the user trust that, okay, at least the system is recommending me what I am liking. Um, and this will generally increase the credibility in the system. Serendipity, how um, is our system capable of um, showing the new items or even showing the surprising items where, let's say, system can recommend me a movie where I can like, I can say the actor is very good. I like the acting. So how serendipitous uh, are our recommendation? Scalability, um, can we increase the system as per our data needs? Because as we grow into, in, as we grow or move forward in future, we really need to think where um, the systems are scalable. We need to um, adopt those algorithms that are um, free or that are good enough to scale up to maybe um, larger sets of data, maybe even uh, petabytes of data, without impacting the uh, prediction accuracy, without impacting the performance. Utility is also uh, one of the uh, major uh, success that let's say I implement a recommended system on my side and if that is not giving me any uh, profit, um, means what is the, what is the initial uh, thought when I created this recommended system? What was, my, what was my utility? I wanted to increase my sales. So if it is not happening, then um, that's not the success of the recommended system. Then privacy, because users generally give you the preferences. So we should maintain the privacy and if the system is capable of maintaining the privacy, this should not be used somewhere else. Because this is becoming a large challenge because users give you all the preferences and this can be misused uh, over the internet. And the robustness of the system is also required because sometimes people just test the system or even mis by mistake, sometimes uh, systems tend to get um, wrong inputs and how system performs in those conditions. So all those things should be evaluated when we design a recommender system. Uh, 